Axel Grell. Maybe you've heard of him before, maybe you haven't. He's the guy behind Sennheiser's biggest hits over the last decades or so. And now the TWS-1 are the first release under his own self-titled brand Grell Audio. Investing 199 euros for headphones is catapulting this first-timer product into the same league as the Sony XM4 and Neurathrus. So I was absolutely interested to see what these butts can do and if they hold all the bold claims that come with a name that oozes expertise right from the get-go. Design-wise these are some really modern looking earbuds. They are mostly round, but sport a super small stem coming from the bottom which houses the mics. The mix of metal and plastic compounds used on the outer casing of the butts is really clean, a very distinct font used for the logo that resembles the same color tone as the metal ring and casing the glass from the touch control panels. These are the premium materials you are looking for when spending 199 euros on your butts. Speaking of premium materials, the case is completely completely made out of metal. It is heavy and stylish and sports a small LED bar indicating the connection as well as the battery status when opening the lid. Oh, and it's a much bigger case than I've initially expected it to be. It's still reasonably big, but if you like your case to be unnoticeable in your pockets, you need to look for something else. Overall, I nod my head to the design team for creating a product that stands out from its competitors while still blending in. The only thing that weirded me out with the case is that you have to insert the butts in the wrong direction, meaning left goes in at the right side of the case and vice versa, which makes it really annoying until you actually learn it. The case sports a battery life of 34 hours. It is able to recharge the butts four times over. The butts themselves claim to have a six hour charge available with A and C turned on, which <laughs> to my Amazement actually claims through to the minute. The fit on the other side is very good and I had no problems in keeping them in for whole duration of listening until they had to be recharged. No aches, no sweating or anything in that case. They are a tad heavier but are balanced well enough for me to not notice any of it. Since all newly released earbuds are becoming incredibly close in terms of being well the same with a slight tweak here and there. Grell decided to stand out through sound quality, so they partnered with the Sound ID app to tune the bus to your personal preference and hearing, which is the same route Neura took with their butts even though theirs is still on another different level. But this is where things go up and down in both directions at the same time. The Sound ID app is in combination with the Grell butts well, a mess. A very big mess to be precise. Number one, connection on my iPhone 13 was frequently dropped while trying to set up SoundID for the first time. When finally being able to get a steady connection, you needed to update the buts, which took six tries over several hours to actually get them to work with the SoundID app. While not being able to connect and therefore use all of its features, I was mostly looking forward to the personalized sound, I tried to test run them without any customization, listening to the songs I listened to with all my headphone tests. And uh, oh boy, they sounded really thin, almost hollow without any personalization. Something I would expect from a low to mid tier butt at roughly 80 to 100 euros. So my first introduction was a very unpleasant experience. I mostly prefer a beefier sound in the lows as well as a higher dynamic range when it comes to mids and highs. And when finally completing the test through Sound ID, which took roughly half an hour, the sound that presented itself was way better than before. I mean, this isn't even comparable. Very clearly distinguishable instruments, a clear separation in the mids, the bass was powerful and distortion free. This is the first time since actually using the Neuratrus that I have to say I really like the sound the buds offer me as a personalized sound. It's still not as good as the Neuras, but much closer than anything else I've tested over the last year. Toggling between the default sound and your personalized sound in the Sound ID app is quite an astonishing difference in terms of the range these buds are able to produce. As soon as you are happy with your personalized sound, you can upload it to your buds and use it with any other device that you are using right now. The fit is great. Sound quality is fantastic as soon as you've managed to cope with the Sound ID app. The battery life is exactly what has been claimed by Grell. So, uh, where are the problems you are actually talking about? Hmm, it's not in the ANC either. The TWS-1 feature a very good and for the price actually very very good active noise cancelling that filters out most of the annoying lower frequencies such as trains, cars and other types of low tone rumblings. 
to also get a grasp on the higher frequencies such as children or constant electric humming. Grell introduces its own sound profile on top, which is called Noise Annoyance Reduction or NAR for short, which in my opinion works fine. You don't notice it that much, but that is what it actually excels in. It does its job in the background, drowning out sounds so that you don't notice them in the first place. Pretty good ANC overall, that still cannot compete with what the XM4's ANC does. But it isn't far off either, we are talking minimal differences here. And now here are still some more features that should be briefly mentioned in a review for a premium pair of earbuds. They can be wirelessly charged, but they aren't compatible with my Samsung wireless charger. And they can be used in mono mode, meaning you can only use one bud at a time if you like to take your calls the old fashioned way, for example. Oh, and also, the mic quality is really great. The stems really make a difference in bringing the mics closer to your mouth, they pick up the sound very clearly and are much better than expected. Here is a small example of the sound quality. And should we win today, the 4th of July will no longer be known as an American holiday, but as the day the world declared in one voice, we will not go quietly into the night, we will not vanish without a fight. We're going to live on, we're going to survive. Today. We celebrate. So, if the battery life, the sound, the fit, the mics, the features, as well as the looks are great, then what is your problem with the buds? The controls are broken. They are a disaster. I actually don't find a way to say it more easy. I'm not sure what happened at the factory they were produced at, but this is the most alpha product that I've gotten when it comes to controlling your butts. Touching the butts only for a fraction of a second already initiates whatever kind of function it wants. You twist the butts slightly to up the seal once more, BOOM! Noise cancelling turns off, transparency turns on, the music stops or whatever. What the fuck is actually happening? Oh, and to make things even worse, Different functions are controlled with different sides of the buds, which actually forces you to memorize the manual from the inside out because it becomes complicated and unusable with those short reaction times. Maybe you remember my review of the Harman Kardon TWS buds that were very unresponsive. Well, this is the same kind of fuckery turned on its head. Oh, and you also cannot change the controls in any kind of way, not even through the app. It's really infuriating. So, while recording this video I actually contacted their custom support and asked them if there is any kind of fix. They came back at me 3 days later that they just released a brand new update through the Sound ID app which took me another 2 hours to get to work with the buds. This actually makes controls more usable and less responsive. Good, but still not there. The same update was also touted to me as solving the main problem that I had with the buds but it did not change anything in this regards. The frequent loss of Bluetooth connection, super heavy distortion of the audio, especially in the right earbud when walking outside, also when just turning your head. There is a noticeable lag or a shift of the audio when moving through a highly populated area with lots of different Bluetooth devices. I'm not sure what the problem is, I guess probably some kind of shielding, but losing the connection 7 times on a 15 minute strip via train is something I'm not willing to take from a premium pair of TWS buds. Sitting at home, listening to music while writing this review and being connected to the M1 MacBook, grabbing your iPhone, looking at the screen makes the music begin to stutter and distort. <sighs> That's just not good enough, Grell. I waited and hoped that the update would fix this problem for my pair of butts, but it didn't. So I couldn't do anything else than try to send them back. Why try? Well, by the way, this is also a tedious thing to do since I bought them directly from the manufacturer's website. You have to go into email contact with them, telling them why and how you would like to return their product, praying for them to accept your return and then paying the costs up front as well. So if you are still interested in these buds, they look, feel, sound and reduce noise in thoroughly a great fashion and only fall flat in two major categories that made me return them. Then maybe wait for another six months or so until they fix those problems for real this time. As soon as this has been done, they are a really great pair of buds that I am really sad to be returning to its manufacturer.
Thank you very much for watching, my name is Leech and I'm off writing the next scripts. If you enjoyed this video then make sure to like and subscribe to this channel, there are plenty more of this type of content and many other things available for you to watch. Have a great day, see you around and goodbye.